I was eight years old running around in Red Hook with a little keyboard. The whole projects would crowd around me on the stoop. Whatever block I go to, they'll crowd around me and be like, yo, yo, Bass, play, um, play Inspector Gadget. And I'll play it without knowing how to even play a keyboard from a school or I just play it straight from the heart and from off of the top of the head. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can hear a melody on the radio or on TV show or whatever, and I can play it. Like, I'll find those keys right there on the spot and play it. So, like, I had this gift with that, right? Well, give us an example of that. I, come on, man. Give, give Keyboard some. ain't even on. You have to edit that. T t tune it on. Yeah, juice it up. Juice it up. So, my uncle, right? You know, at, at fir my first encounter with hip-hop music, my mother was pregnant in, I think it was, I was eight years old. She was pregnant with my sister, Shantae. And it was a baby shower at Miss Irene's house. God bless Miss Irene. And they made me and Miss Irene's two sons, Cleef and Elliot, sing Rap is Delight. I was eight years old. That was the first time I ever deal, dealt with hip hop. When I sung that, and we, you know, we, I was Master G, you know what I mean? And Elliot was chubby, so he was Big Bad Hank. Right, so, when I saw the reaction from the, from the family and the friends and the crowd, I liked that, you know what I mean? That feeling stuck with me, like, Yo, that, it just boosted up the confidence. Whatever it was, it, it just woke up the giant in me, like. And I was like, yo, I want that feeling again, you know what I mean? Right. To the point right now, I, I rock in front of 150,000 people, man. Right now, like, you know what I mean? And I go in the middle of the crowd and I wow out with them and everything. Do you ever get nervous around I don't them? never get nervous. I have on mad jewelry, chains. I don't worry about none of that. I don't never get nervous. A pit bull, a pit bull only attacks when he smells fear. Remember that. I don't fear nothing but the judgment. We're going to get into that later. That's another story. Koss, good to see you, man. What is going like in them? In them? Working in the jails. Working in Yo, the jails. That's serious right yeah. there. What is that like? Real I sick. want to turn it, the camera around and it, interview you now. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, it, it, that's it's, a job. It's, I it's think, different. Personally, it, to it's me. It's really different. I salute you for that because... Like I said yesterday, you have police who work the Red Hook area, the Fort Greene area. Then you got another set, another precinct that works the Flatbush area and the Crown Heights area. Then you got another set of police and a precinct that works the East New York and the Brownsville area. Then you got another one that works the Coney Island area. I'm naming all of the major murderous hoods in Brooklyn, right? Now, to me, CO's job is harder. You know why? Because all of those murderers in all of those areas I just named are in one correctional facility, one jail. Right. And who got to house them and keep them in check? Right. The COs. That job is harder than the police. Because you, you, they can maybe can deal with the, the Red Hook area. Right. You understand? Right. And the Fort Greene area because they got units assigned. Right. But who's going to deal with all of these murderers together? And not only that, but on top of it, when these murderers got beef with each other for murdering each other, now you put them all in one building. Right. Can you imagine what kind of job family got? It's crazy. It's psychological. I think 95% of it is psychology courses or something, because you got to be able to deal with these dudes, man. Like, that is the hardest job in the world to me. See, and then when, 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 um, when outside agencies come in, like state troopers and county police and sheriffs, when they come in, they have to disarm all their weapons. Right. Well, somebody could grab Anything. that and pop off. But a lot of times, they don't want to come into the jail, come to pick up the inmate, mm -hmm. because they know there are other inmates there right. who they had a beef with. That they put there. Right. You know what I mean? So they don't so want to come gotta, in there. They gotta They're bring, scared. You got to bring them to the to them right. outside. Right. It's crazy. Just that right there tells you, you know, like, now, imagine the CEOs in there who might have you know what I'm saying, been involved with a little altercation with an inmate and had to write him up for a ticket and got him more time. Now this CEO got to walk the tear knowing that that, prep, that that dude is still in here. You understand? Right. So it's just like having, it's just like being that detective who put them there. Now you added more time to them. Right. You got to live around them. Though. Right. You understand? You're doing the time with them. They got 25 to life. If you're working 25 years there, you're doing 25 to life with them. Right. With, with the thought of being stabbed or killed or, or attacked, 
No, how it is. They ain't gonna never let you know till you get poked up. That's when you're gonna know you had a, a problem with somebody in there. Exactly. You know how it gets. That's the way it That's is. That's the hardest job to me, to be a CEO. You have to have your mind game right. Or it's a rap. If they smell fear, like I said, them, them pit bulls, them wolves, forget it. You think the pit bulls are growling? The wolves are howling. Trust me. That's a rhyme. Yeah, yeah spit, spit something off real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Late at night, you can hear them, you can see them prowling. <laughs> Go to Brownsville, the wolves is howling. <laughs> Pit bulls are growling. It's flooding on Rikers Island. <laughs> now, is it true Rikers Island's on water? Yeah, Rikers Island is basically between the Bronx and Queens and LaGuardia Airport, which is all water. That separates all three. There's a bridge that bring you there. There's a bridge that bring you there. There's a bridge that bring you to Rikers Island. It's all. It's an island, basically. Now, have you ever been there to visit anybody? Yeah, actually, I when I was, <laughs> keep this off the camera. But anyway, <laughs> we was young. You know what I'm saying? We did a lot of dumb shit. You know what I mean? Because when you're a teenager, basically, you're experimenting with who you are and what your purpose is on life, on the earth. You didn't figure it all out yet. In your twenties, you figure you got it. You start working towards it. In your 30s, you got your career and you already know what you want to do. You're here for now. Then in your 40s, you start working hard and getting the money. And then in your 50s, you go out and travel the world and start spending your money and enjoying it. I just summed up life, a lifeline real quick for you. But um, we was we was in the adolescent stages, 17, you know, 16. We were some wild, you know, wild dudes. And um, yeah, I remember my man Malik got locked up, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, he locked up right now. Like, yo, what up, man? You know, yeah, I went to Rikers Island to visit him. It's crazy. It's basically you got to get locked up to visit somebody. I had to go through all kinds of security measures to get just to get in there to visit somebody. It takes like three hours in process, like searching you and all of that. It was ridiculous. And then one time, my brother shot him. He got locked up. He did two weeks on Rikers Island. I went to visit him. You know, so I've been up there. But after, that was in the early 80s, you know what I'm saying? Like, late 80s, I mean, early 90s. But another time I've been up there was with me and my uncle, Younger Nut. He, um, he had did a, a wedding reception for this girl who got married. And he, he blew it up. He killed it. And they loved it. And the girl's father happened to be the warden at Rikers Island. So he told him, yo, I want you to do that show for the inmates, that, that DJ and thing, you know what I mean? They need some kind of recreation up there, maybe to help the violence. So he was like, yo, I got a nephew who you might know of. I want to bring him with me as my MC. And he was like, yeah, who are you talking about? He's like, yo, Shabazz the Disciple. He was on the Grave Diggers and Wu-Tang, you know. He's like, oh, I know him. He's like, definitely, let's do it. Just send me the, um, his bio. Let's do it the professional way. He said, how much you want to charge? I was like, let me ask him. So my uncle was like, yo, you know, I got the warden from Rikers Island. He want us to come up. He said, we could come up every Saturday if we want to do some shows in Rikers Island. How much do you want? I was like, I don't want nothing. Don't pay me nothing. Just give me the opportunity to talk to them inmates. You understand? Because they say in the Bible that Jesus sat amongst the sinners and, 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 the, and you understand? He sat amongst the criminals and ate his dinner. What does that mean to you? You know what that means? That anybody who's inspired by the word with the words of God, who's speaking to the people and trying to uplift them, what better place? You know what I'm saying? Who are the people who really need that? The ones that are in jail who made the wrong choices in life. I don't need to, I love going to the colleges too, don't get me wrong, but you know what, those people already made the right choice in life. They already, you know what I'm saying, made the positive decision and took the positive direction in life. So I'm not really worried about them. I'm worried about these brothers right here who don't have no family, their mothers are, you know, God, you know, God forbid, they, but it's real, their mothers are junkie, you know what I'm saying, their fathers in there with them, you know what I'm saying, they met their father, first time they met their father was in the yard in some, you know what I'm saying, upstate somewhere. You know what I'm saying? They never knew their father, but they met him in jail. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I need to talk to those dudes who don't have no hope. You understand? So I was like, yo, I, won't, I don't want nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because I get my money later. You know what I'm saying? It's all, you know. So every Saturday morning, we would get up early, go to Rikers Island. You know what I'm saying? And I would perform in Rikers Island. We couldn't bring no cameras in there. They don't allow no videotaping unless you come in with HBO or MTV or something like that. Then they'll get a party. You know what I'm saying? They don't want no footage. They don't want it filmed in there. You know what I'm saying? So we we respected the rules. We understood that. But basically, this was the fucking. This was the memory. The memory was the film. This was the camera right here, and it, it, it rests right here. We ain't gonna never forget that. That was one of the best experiences 
I could ever ask for, you know what I mean? Because of getting in touch, you know what I'm saying, the lives of those who are, you know, incarcerated, some of them never coming out of jail, you know, they, they you know, they was going upstate to go do their little life bid or whatever they was doing. And when I when I left out of there, they loved me. So, you know, my name buzzed in jail, and if you realize, jail run the streets. So trust me, the buzz was ridiculous. So yeah, I've been up there. And the first day we got there, you know, I did a show in a woman's house, 